Oh, see All right. I just want to share this with you. I hope it will kind of encourage you, challenging you. We all need a, a challenge in our lives, but a challenge for the good, okay? <laughs> now, uh, this, is, this is for those who view themselves as Christians, okay? If you consider yourself a Christian, all right, now, before I uh, go into this, let me just say, the Lord, Yeshua, Jesus, did say, so why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I say? So that is a good question, right? Why does one call him Lord or their Lord? Why do they call themselves a Christian, meaning a, a follower of Christ, and yet does not do what he says? We always got excuses. We can come up with some humdingers on excuses, right? Oh, yeah. Excuses galore, and that's what they are. All right, and... I'm going to read this to you. And now this is the Lord talking. What I'm going to read to you. This is what the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, is, is here in uh, the, one, this, this gospel. The gospel of Luke. It's him talking. And the question is, how many excuses can you come up with? Whether you come up with one or a dozen and everything, it won't it won't swallow in the eyes of God. Okay, you you when you stand before Him, you you can excuse it all you want, but really you're not going to say nothing because it's going to be an open book. Okay, I said enough here. Let's read. This is Luke chapter six, starting at verse twenty-seven. But I say to you. Who listen? And by the way, I'm reading from the CSB. It's a little simple for some. Uh, the, the word is supposed to be meant to be understood. Uh, yeah, I got all kinds of versions, not in all the Bible. You know, uh, but I look at it this way: what people fail to understand, the different versions are. Like, for different levels of understanding, depending on what group of people is being addressed. Uh, I have King James. I love the King James. I love the New King James. I love the CSB, the NIV, the NASB. But see, a real quick story, and I'll finish reading, all right? There was a young man who was in the military. He had a wife and a little baby. And uh, me and my brother, we, we'd run into him, talk to him. And uh, the thing is, is that he didn't really care much for church or uh, everything, especially where people were saying King James only. Because he did not, uh, that's Cheyenne talking. I, uh, anyway, uh, he... Uh, he couldn't understand that old, old English. He tried and he tried and he tried and he couldn't understand it, so he just gave up on it. So I, I had thought about it and I felt led to do it. So uh, next day I went and was looking for a Bible specifically for him. So I found the New Living Translation. And I looked through it, and I seen it would be at the right level for him to start out to read. And then when he can get the understanding of what the Bible says, then he can graduate <laughs> to something, you know, where he, you know, that would be appropriate. But I gave him a New Living Translation. I bought it. Gave it to him. 
told him, try reading it. Just try. I said, don't make no promises, just try. Next day after that, he met me and my brother and he had tears in his eyes. He was so thankful. So thankful. Yeah. See, don't go around poking your fingers at uh, other versions and stuff. Yeah, there's some out there that's questionable, very questionable, but overall, just on a safe side, don't. And don't condemn others and say, that's of the devil. Don't call God's word of the devil. Just don't, okay? That's bad. And you can turn someone away from God real quick. With yourself, and that's what it is, self-righteous. That's the attitude that most will have towards others. They, you know, they don't, they don't understand anything really. They just think they do, and then, then uh, push others over the edge and turn them away and cause them to curse God, and then you gotta have to answer for it. And trust me, you won't have words to say before Him, okay? And now I'm getting all off on the <laughs> here, but that was the whole thing about the versions. But let's get on with the reading here. I'm so sorry. But I just thought I would add that because sometimes you never know when someone's going to say, I don't trust that. That's not the Bible. That's not King James. Real quick, like, that King James you got ain't original. So you, you're going to preach King James, you better go to the original. Do not carry on that with me because, or anyone else. Because you're being a hypocrite. Or if not hi hypocrite, I, let me scratch that. You're being ignorant. I'm not saying that like, you stupid. No, I'm saying it like you're being ignorant and trying to claim you know something. Yeah, that's, that's ignorant. You don't study enough, and then you go by some preacher who don't even study to himself and know the history of the translations, and yeah. But that's the reason why I mentioned all that in the first place, because of me reading out of this, all right? Uh, where was I? Verse 27, but I say to you who listen, love your enemies. Do what is good to those who hate you ouch did that one hurt hmm bless those verse 28 bless those who curse you ooh ouch are you doing that um uh, he says Pray for those who mistreat you. Mm -hmm. What kind of excuses you got so far? I'm sure there's a lot of you who won't say nothing, but you 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 you, you got an excuse, and others who truthfully looks inside and quietly to oneself says, "You know that's right." All right, and it says uh, in verse 29, If anyone hits you on the cheek, offer, offer the other also. Oh, I, I, I know about all the excuses on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard a lot of the excuses on that one. But that's what they are. Excuses, not facts, excuses. If you're a Christian, you proclaim to follow Christ, and you call him Lord, then how come you don't do what he says? Hmm? <coughs> All right. Here we go. Uh, he says here, in that same verse, and if anyone takes away your coat, don't hold back your shirt either. 
Mm. Okay, that one's hitting home, ain't it? Uh, give to everyone, verse 30, give to everyone who asks you and from someone who takes your things, someone who takes your things, don't ask for them back. What is most people do, prone to do? Go and demand it back, or you know, whatever, right? But what is it? What did what did Yeshua, Jesus, say? Huh? He said, "Don't ask for them back." Verse thirty-one: Just as you want others to do for you, do the same for them. If you love those who love you, and I know there's a lot like that, who only love people who love them. Mm -hmm. He says, if you love those who love you, or we could probably even go and say it probably would fit for today even, would be if you love those who on, only those if you only love those who only love you. Alright, Jesus says, What credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do what is good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? And what credit will that stand on on Judgment Day when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ? Hmm? If you do what is good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. Verse 34, And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is is that to you even sinners lend to sinners to be repaid in full but love your enemies verse 35 but love your enemies he didn't say when it was convenient he didn't put a condition to that he says Notice this is, but love your enemies. Do what is good and lend expecting nothing in return. Oh, so many's got excuses on that on so many levels. Woo! All right, let's go on to this. In that same verse, he goes on to say, after he says, expecting nothing in return, he says, then your reward will be great. And you will be children of the Most High. So if we're not obeying him and following what he says and how can we call ourselves children of God hmm it says for he is gracious to the ungrateful and evil to the bad that's what when the word evil it means bad so in other words for he is gracious to the ungrateful and the bad All right, it says, Be merciful just as your Father also is merciful. Oh, yeah. That one just it was hitting home on so many levels, right? See, what I say to you also applies for me. It ain't. For you only, it's for me too, because it comes from this. You, you, you know, 
we need to stop making excuses and look deep within our souls and our hearts. And we need to be truthful. Then we need to go before Him and ask Him to touch us, to help us, guide us, lead us, direct us, and give us strength. He will do it. But go to Him. If you're struggling, go to Him, all right? I didn't mean to take so long. You gotta excuse me. I'm an old dude here. And sometimes I, I uh, if I'm not careful, I go, I'm start out on one subject, start to go on another, and then go around back, come back to the subject. Yeah. But the thing is, we need to love one another, pray for one another, and. Uh, do good also not just to one another but to those who who are evil oh that one's a hard one if it was easy the Lord wouldn't have said it now would he but he can give us the grace to make it through it to handle it it's not that easy being tested but see, there is a reason for it, is to help you grow stronger. Think about that. These things happen for a reason, and, and we don't always know the reason, but you'll come through it. You have many ups and downs, and many hills, many mountains, and many valleys to go through. But you're running this race, you don't give up. You look at the goal up ahead because we've almost reached the goal. <laughs> it's almost right within our sight. It's like you can almost taste it, you know? But too many are giving up. The Bible said in the last day that there'd be a great falling away, and there is. So don't give up. If you have fallen away, let me urge you to get back on the right track. Because, see, you're not promised tomorrow. And you can make all kinds of excuses, but you know in your heart what's going to happen to you. If you leave this earth tonight, tomorrow, next week, next month, whatever, you're going to have to stand before a right a righteous judge, not a human judge that you can bribe or excuse your way out of it because you won't have nothing to say because it's all laid out before you and you know it to be the truth and you know it's too late. So we got to try the best we can now and stay in there and follow Him. Get your hearts right. Give your hearts to Him. Now is not the time to make excuses and worrying about the Others might laugh at you. They laughed at Jesus. They laughed and mistreated the apostles. And see, true, true Christians were fixing in this country, and they're doing it. It's happening to true Christians across the world right now. Heavily persecution, being even to laying down of their lives, tortured, and that's what we're fixing to go through here. So. Are you ready? Are you? Am I? See, that's why we gotta hold on, and you know, because He's our strength. Because we will be tested. We think we've been tested, really, maybe on some things, but there are minor things. We're all gonna be tested, and we're gonna be tested heavily. So let me encourage you. Follow the Lord, trust in Him. He is faithful. He is just. And He does care. But the thing is, give your heart to Him. And if you feel away, turn back to Him before it's too late. Okay? 
because he does care. He's there right there all the time waiting. But he ain't going to force you. So, turn your hearts back to him if you have fell on a way and if you have never given your heart truthfully to him, then do it now. We are in the last of the last days. Open your eyes and see. I love you, and let us pray for one another. And uh, remember, we're, we're, we're not perfect. That is, you know, we're not without flaws, but that don't excuse our wrongdoings our sins but God is gracious and he will forgive but don't ever say I can do this and he's going to forgive me because you might find yourself unforgiven with that attitude God ain't a fool he knows he knows your heart so turn to him get right with him before it's too late I don't claim to be excellent in, you know in, in, in words I'm not a great speaker I'm just an old man been out in the country I might have been around the block but they don't make me all wise I make mistakes and have made mistakes like anyone else but I'm not going to hold on to those you know, to, you know as an excuse for anything neither should you is that we got to always understand that there is coming a day and it's fast approaching upon us more than what you ever know where we have to ask ourselves are we ready do you want to be with the Lord forever? Or do you want to just keep on your present route that you're taking, the present path that leads to nowhere but destruction, to death? That's a terrible place to be going in, you know? No one in the right mind wants to be in that predicament. So think about it, okay? <coughs> and on any videos or song, uh, if it's uh, been any help to you in any way, let me know. And if you also have some uh, something as, uh, that may uh, be helpful uh, as a, a thought to add on to what we just talked about just now, uh, feel free to do so, you know, and I know that, you know, there will always be times where we, we, uh, we might not see eye to eye on something, but don't mean we can't share what we're thinking, our thoughts, and to help one another, right? Right. I love you all, and I didn't mean to take so long. But I want to hurry up and do this because uh, it's going to be starting to rain and I don't know when I can be able to do another porch talk <laughs> and everything. And it gets kind of warm today, so but it's going to get a little little cooler later. And it's going to be raining. Not heavily, but raining. <laughs> okay, so you have a blessed day. And... Uh, yeah, I decided to get rid of the rest of my hair because let me tell you, you know, when you get into dealing with uh, warm weather and you get to sweating, oh yeah, that can, that'd be a humdinger to deal with. I don't feel like messing with it. No, I decided, no, I, I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> uh, I better shut up. I'll be going on forever here now. I love y'all. Remember me in your prayers. And uh, let us pray for one another. And uh, also, uh, remember Standing Bear, Country Boy Explorer. You know, he's 
he, he's got some things he's going through and he needs our prayers and uh, pray for him okay and, and let, let him know that you, you are thinking about him and don't say it because I said it say it because it comes from your heart but let him know that you care if if you care and also you know don't be afraid to ask someone to pray for a, a special need if you don't want to mention precisely what that is it's okay just say i have a unspoken prayer request when we all know what you mean and tell me it's very if it's urgent well it's urgent and if it's you know not so urgent well but you, you, the thing is, you just, you just mention it, and we'll pray because we got to pray for one another, encourage one another, spur each other on, because we're almost at the end of this race, and we can't stop now. That's like in a marathon, you know, when he's the old marathons. Sometimes when someone is lagging and, and about to fall, someone who's got a good heart will usually. You want to want to look at a, a rat just took off over. I got to get rid of that. But anyway, they'll help that person to help them finish that race. Haven't you ever seen instances like that? I have. So let us help one another to not give up because this race is almost finished. You can see the goal just ahead right so don't quit keep going all right i talk too much i love you pray for one another and i will catch you another time if you got any uh, song requests please let me know and uh, any prayer requests just we can all pray together for one another all right thank you and please, if if you like it, hit the like button. If you, and if you will, you can share it. And also, you can comment. Instead of being quiet, <laughs> you can comment. Yeah. Subscribe, like, share, comment. I love you. And let us pray for one another. So let me just say, aho and wado. Later. His love.